Let's get through this thing. Let's get through this thing. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Hello, my fellow readers. I Dark Symphony 777 with another fan fiction review. As always, a link to start will be in the description below. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, click on that bell for notification, leave a comment in the comment section below on your thoughts of the story, and, any, and finally, this is my opinion. My opinion is not indicative of everyone in the world, so please respect that. So the story we're reading, reviewing today is Konosuba, A Party's Heart and Soul by Mega Panda 25. Kill me. Mm, no, keep talking. Let's see. I don't know. I, I I don't. I don't know how to. It's. I don't know how to. I, don't, I honestly don't know how to describe the story. I, I I really don't. But uh, yeah. This is a story that exists. Oh boy, this is a story that very much exists. Oh. Okay, so I've been I've been holding off reviewing the story for a while. I actually had this story finished reading for like nearly two and a half weeks, and I said there was like I said in my update, I said there's a there's a very good reason why I don't want to read this. Um, funny story. Uh, what I completely forgot what this what this story was about. When I finished it, and I was like, "Oh, it's one of those, one of those stories." This story is so forgettable. I don't. How do you make a two hundred and fifty thousand word harm story come off as like the dull, drier than? Pride and Prejudice, and I know, and I've read Pride and Prejudice, not all of it, but I've read enough of it to know that it's, it's like, if you're going to compare it to that, you know this story's going to be boring and dull. That's really the best way I can describe this story. It's boring, it's dull, and, and I don't know, maybe, yeah, maybe it's just to kill me, like, oh, it's, I still, I, like, I'm dead serious. When I finished the story, I'm like, I blanked, like, it was so dull, I blanked out, like, half of what happened in the story. Because it was just, I was completely apathetic. Nothing, nothing stood out, like, like, I can't even say anything bad about it, because it's like, Besides, it, there's nothing inherently wrong with anything in the story. Problem is, there's nothing inherently good in the story either. It's just, it's just that right sweet spot where just nothing stands out in any good or bad way to talk about, and it just kind of blends together. So what's the story about? Uh, well, the story starts with um right there. The, pr the prologue kind of says, "Oh, Kazuma dies in a dungeon." They basically, basically the the guild they on they had a dungeon open up a quest. They thought it was going to be easy. It turns out it was very very hard. Yeah, everyone's like kind of late. I have apparently kind of lazy. And yeah, it's, I'm going to get a lot of stuff wrong with this because it's just gonna. It's just, uh, it's all. And then I gotta try and remember get the, the the right details right. Uh, so Kazuma dies again, and he goes to Eris, and Eris basically, I can't. I'm kind of. I. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, basically, said so I'm worried about you, dude, because you keep because you keep dying. So it's like I'll I'll I'll, I'll wipe away Aqua's deal with you. Like you can go home, you can reincarnate, and you can just be happy. Ta da! And Cousin was like, Nah, I like my messed up family. Just like, uh, all right. 
All right, then. <laughs> and he wakes up. And then all of a sudden, Aqua, Megumin, and Darkness, they're just acting completely weird. And this is where I, I have to give the story credit because it had an, a very well done setup with the idea that the that the reason why he starts getting weirded out is the fact that they are not acting like themselves, like almost like they're changing. Like Megumin like offers like, well, I, I might I might learn something other than explosion, and Ikazu was like, wait. Mega Mega Man, you know, and not and not learning explosions. They must be possessed. And then Aqua learning cooking. She must be possessed too. Well, at least Darkness is like, I'm gonna hold in my masochistic tendencies. Oh no, even they even got the darkness. No, and it's so. I don't I don't know, like the idea of it. Like it's trying to be a horror story, because. They apparently in the story they reveal they all kind of fall, fall in love with him after they defeated Sylvia, and they they all agree to like share him. And later they get like other horror mates. Like in the story they get he gets like not really horror mates but more friends with benefits. They got uh, Wiz, Yin Yin, uh. Chris, who's actually heiress to the sky, and, and Sarah. And then Wolbach, and then a the character named Wolbach. I actually don't know that character. Apparently she's from uh, the Mega Man spinoff. I think. And then she becomes part of the harem, and then it's just, it's it's weird. It's it, The story's plot basically boils down to is they fall in love with with Kazuma. Like, the girls the girls fall in love with Kazuma. Kazuma being a Hikimori, or a Shudden, if you want. I'm just going to call him a short Shudden for convenience sake. Doesn't know how to handle that. Because he's been shut off, he, he was a Shudden so long, that he doesn't really... He can't really understand the, the fact that they're kind of romantically interested in it. It's like, okay, that's that would be fine for a sort of family story because it's revealed that Kazuma, the reason why he shut in is like he had, and the reason he's acting like this combined with the shut in is the fact he never really fully got over what happened after his, his first death with his family kind of laughing at him. More specifically how he died because if you, if you never watched Konosuba, how Kazuma died is like a parody of the whole truck thing with like, oh, He's gonna. He sees a girl. He sees. He sees a truck coming. He goes to save her, and instead of getting run over by the truck, it turns out to be like a tractor going like two miles an hour, and he actually not only dies from like a heart, like an actual heart attack, but also pisses himself. And while on his deathbed, his family, his parents actually start laughing at him, and that's kind of the impetus for a big part of the story. Is the fact he never fully got. Over that. I think, okay, that actually sounds like a very good idea for like a familiar, like a family story. Like it said, like, oh, they become like one big happy family and, and you know, the girl, the, uh, simultaneously the girls help him kind of stop being a shut -in. like Like slowly help him heal mentally from not only his tendencies, but also moving past what happened and let and, you know and letting him you know be more open be more be more social and stuff like that and also with and in response Cosmo helps them deal with their issues like it helps uh, like uh, Cosmo helps Megumin learn more spells and stop relying on explosion stops like keeps uh, me, uh, darkness from expressing herself masochistically and also makes Aqua not useless. That, that one's just plain weird. I can't picture off of anything well useless. However, instead of going the family route, the author goes the harem route. And this is where a big part of the story I don't like is, is how the author handled the harem. Because, because I don't... 
I don't think the harem idea was necessarily bad per se, because you kind of iffy because harem is not for everything. And I get that Dakota was technically have harm tropes. It's supposed to parody harm tropes. But the way it's executed is so poor. It is so poor. Because like over like here. Like, okay, it's it starts off very awkwardly, like, you know, playing into the part that the Kazuma is still a shut in and and he, you know, he still he's he doesn't fully grasp what's going on. That's fine, but then he keeps going on that they keep referring themselves as girlfriends. It gets super saturated, and the whole and you forget that the whole point of the story was about Kazuma getting over his trauma. It's it's such a weird talk show. I know. And I know the the synopsis, like you know, it's more, um, you know, it's more him weaving his way through, like why is his, why is Aqua Mega Man of Darkness acting this way, and, and yeah, I kind of get, I kind of get that, I kind of get that's what the author's the author's trying to purposely go for the harem angle. The problem is the the whole familiar art angle with helping him with the traumatic experience was such a much better better way to do things. And especially since the instead of letting kind I guess you could say the author really, really likes to remind you that they're in a harem. Like they, they mention it every like once you get to here, almost every chapter. It's like constantly reminding you it's like, oh yeah, they're in a harem. Oh, oh yeah, they're girlfriends. Oh yeah, it's my girlfriend. Oh yeah, he's my god. She Aqua's my goddess of mine. Oh, and this and that, and it kind of becomes a point where it actually comes off as very, very forced because of that constant reminder. It's like okay, every once in a while, like just, just you know, it's like oh, a decoration of love or like a, a pet nickname. But when the author goes out of their way to constantly remind you, like, literally, like, let's look through the story. Here's reference number one. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, no, this is where they, they profess where they fall in love. I don't think this was... I think it was, like, the worst chapter to do it. Let me, do, let me check the next chapter. Okay. No, not this one, because this is with wool ball. Oh, here we go. Uh, don't... Uh, I am... I am not helping my ar argument. <laughs> I just realized I am not helping my argument. It, hel it happens as the story goes along, but there's there comes a time where it does... It does come off this board. Let me, let me go to another one. Uh, yeah. So, is he like his here? Girlfriends. Yep, right there. Uh, yeah, there's the last one. Uh, let's say that. Uh, yep, you can actually uh, Yeah, here we go. It learns. I oh, know that's this this wool ball. Uh, you have beautiful. Yeah, there's there's references. There's remind you. You have reminding you. Uh, oh yeah, uh, reminding you. Uh, yep, yeah, reminding you because it also. Reference to the fact that the author did do like a a erotic scene, which was boring. How do you how do you mess up? How do you mess up porn? How do you mess up porn? <laughs> and make it the most dull, boring thing ever. Ah, no. I don't know. I'm just not into. It. Like that's the big thing. It's like. 
Uh, I'm just so I'm honestly just so hung up on the fact that you had the author had a perfect angle to do uh, this type of story and focus on the mental aspect, like helping helping Cosmo, and then just went about it the wrong way by just for just doing the har doing the harem and showing so just just con- just mentioning it and kind of. Stop being a more psychological thing and stop being. It's not, it's like it's a romance suspense. It's not even a suspense story. There's like barely any suspense. If it was a drama story, maybe you could push it, but not suspense. Uh, characters. There's only there's a lot of characters. Uh. Oh boy, Kazuma. Kazuma, I think is like the only. I guess you could say decently done character. It does kind of, it does focus on the fact that, again, this story is very much focusing on trying to improve Cosmo's mental health, but instead kind of segueing into a harem. I think, I think for what it's worth, Cosmo's written well, Aqua's written well, um, Darkness is honestly just there. She's like, she sees, like, in the background at times, which kind of makes sense because it's darkness. And Meg, yeah, and then Megumin is just basically this funky kid. Oh, like, ah! all, the char- all the characters pretty much just act the same in canon. Like, the only, the only thing they change about the characters is the fact that they try and learn skills that they don't normally have to, tr- to, to help Cosmo out. Aqua learning cooking, uh, Megaman learning more than uh, explosion, and Darkness trying to curb her tendencies. I think have the other character, you have Yun Yun, Wiz, uh, Chris. There's a thing between uh, Chris slash Eris and Wolbach because Eris is constantly trying to like really keep an eye on Wolbach and because. Wolbach was a goddess who learned dark magic and was shunned out of the god out, out of the council. And then Eris kind of has to go through a thing where she kind of weirdly, where she kind of has to keep an eye on her because she doesn't trust that Wolbach because Wolbach's probably gonna do something. And then you also had the, the Double King's daughter, and the Double King they only the Double King only really shows up periodically. Doesn't have really much. Uh, same thing with the daughter. They're all right for what they're for what they're doing for how they're handled. Uh, I think all the characters, with the exception of Darkness, are fine. It's just I honestly think Darkness was just a little too in the background for for what the story's trying to do. Even with the hard angles, she just got, she comes off as like in the background a lot, which you really shouldn't do with a harm story. That's just it. Even like even when Wolbach joins joins the crew. Later in the story, the, the story puts more focus on Wolbach than, than Darkness. It's weird. Uh, grammar errors. I didn't see any grammar errors. Or I can't remember any grammar errors. And pacing. Uh, this, this story is very paced slowly. I get it. I think this story, it makes sense for this story to be a slower paced story. And the writing itself is not bad. It does... It does feel very much like a sort of feature-length film of Konosuba sort of thing. It's just, I can't, I just can't get past the plot. I just really think the plot is just so, it's so dully executed. Like, it's just like, like, I, I know I, I did, I know I showed it poorly, but trust me when I say it, when you read the story and you get through it, it does, the story does like to remind you that they're not hard. I just, I just picked the wrong, <laughs> wrong chapters to show it. They do. It does. It does. It does show you that. Uh, and they do like to mention it a lot. Mm. Would I recommend this story? I don't. I honestly don't know. Like, I, that's. That's like the big. That's like the big hang up. It's like because I'm just so apathetic towards the story. Like when I told my friends on on Discord and asked, and they asked me, it's like, how are the stories? Like, it's just the most 
dull and boring thing I've, I've read in so long. I don't even know how to actually if I should recommend it or not because because I just there I can't I don't feel nothing from it. This is just a two hundred plus thousand story where I just felt nothing. I didn't feel happy. I didn't feel sad. I didn't feel anger, joy. I felt nothing. I felt so little about the story that I just could I just couldn't get into it. I couldn't I just maybe it's not for me. Maybe um, I, I don't I don't know how to actually describe it. Like I don't I honestly I honestly know. Uh I don't know how to actually say it. What's the word? Oh yeah, it's it's apathetic. Apathy. I, I it was I have not felt a level of apathy this high in reading fanfiction in a long, long time. I think the last time I've actually read this 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 level was uh, misconceptions. I, I I know I'm bringing up misconceptions, but that story was dull was duller than a piece of paper. Was just dull dull. At least that story had good character development, but this char- but these characters are just fine, except for our dark again, except for darkness. Um. I honest if I have to if I have to pick whether or not to recommend it or not, I would probably I would put it in the middle. There's just it's just such um in the middle story that I can't I can't really say either way. I, I just don't I just I don't I, it's it, it's such a nothing story. Like, the only objectively part I don't like is the two er- is the two erotic scenes. Is the two erotic chapters. Because they just... Be- because there is no need to have them here. And even then, I just bear... I just felt like, you wasted... You wasted erotica on such a dull story. It don't need me. It don't. Favorite part? I got nothing. So, that begs the question. How would I change it? Well, that's actually easy. The first thing I would do, get rid of the two small chapters. I honestly don't think they need to be the story. Change the genre from romance to suspense to romance and drama. Because if you're going to have the psychological angle... You don't need the suspense. If you want to keep the whole thing with the double king and his daughter, fine. I guess that's fine. What I would do is have it have it set up the same way, like you know the the whole impetus towards it being his death six. But I would extend the conversation between Eris and Kazuma because you know Kazuma's like I'd rather stay here. It's like, and then Eris. Asking, Eric asking Cosmo, it's like, well, why do you want to stay here? It's like, I don't know. It's like, and then Cosmo hints towards the, the basically the fact that his family left him, and Eris just feels completely depressed. And so what happens is when Aqua revives Cosmo, you don't have them being all worried and all that, and then instead you have a they go back to their home, their little mansion, and then. Eris shows Eris, Eris, as Chris shows up, dra- uh, drags Aqua to the side, and basically talks to Aqua about you know the fact that Kazuma mentioned something about his fa- his family, and he's got kind of hold up on that. And Aqua gets kind of curious, like you, if you're going to do this psychological angle, it's like you should still have them be themselves, like be their completely useless selves. But say, but instead of you know goofing off and doing the romance angle, you do the family angle. They see, 
the that's not that's another thing about the harem. Despite the fact it's a harem, they feel more like a family. Like they feel like a like a bunch of brothers and sisters, just a big old happy family. No no romance stuff like that, or familiar or at best familiar love. Have them when they wake up and they take care and they take care of Cosmo. They basically uh, you could have a scene where uh, all the girls start troubleshooting, like what could be wrong with them. It's like and they basically just go wild and they go confront to Kazuma, and Kazuma reveals that he didn't really get over his family, his parents laughing at him. He's still convinced that that they loved him. And they all decide after after talking to him after a long tough time, they all decide it's like we weren't really the best family either, weren't we? And so they all sadly agreed to try and cur- personally try and curtail with with limited success their their bad qualities be- because they want to try and help cause them out. So darkness will be less masochistic. Aqua will learn some other magic in secret. Aqua will. Learn how to cook, or learn how to see. See, tell how Aqua be a therapist. It's like you can do a little scene where she's like wearing glasses, like tell me about your brain. It's like Aqua, what are you doing? I am doing therapy. I learn stuff. Did you read a book? Yes, <laughs> I read two books. How far did you get them? I only read five pages each. That doesn't stop therapy. Sit down. <laughs> Sit down, let me poke your brain. That's not how I work. Sit down! <laughs> Don't make me do my cray face on you. <laughs> and basically, if you want to do the romance angle, fine. Honestly, I honestly think that Cosmo shouldn't fall in love with any of them. At best, maybe Yun Yun. As like a sort of as sort of like they're they're too much they're like in similar situations and they kind of help the and they kind of help each other build each other build each other up and be better people and more and be more open and stuff like that. But I think the core dynamic with the four should just be a just a straight family, no lovey dovey stuff, familiar bonds, brothers and sisters, and all four and the girls helping Cosmo get rid of his shut tendencies, like have him go fit. Hell, don't have a be adventure. Just have them do like simple stuff, like fishing or just walking around, exercising. Maybe go to like um a parade. Have them do a little parade where they're just going around and talking to each other. And it's like we gotta talk. If you before you come home, you have to talk to this many people and just and just have a conversation with them and do like normal stuff. Like, but you have the drama where he's constantly. Where, you know, the whole habits come in. It's like they have to constantly keep picking him up because so, with something like this that's been entrenched in his mind for so long, you know, there's going to be, like, instance where he might relapse or stuff like that. And you could easily just, you can, and that could be the whole conflict besides the whole thing with the daughter. Like, the daughter getting mad that the, that the generals are going mad are just falling to Cosma and goes against her father's orders to basically just hunt Cosma and they basically just, you know, basically just butts in on his life, like being like an antagonistic or not really being the villain once she finds out that Cosmo more or less just did it by, beat him all by accident. And so she realizes like quickly, he's like, wait, this guy is just a fucking loser. How did, how did the generals beat loose to this guy? And then you can have like a, a small couple chapters where she's just hanging out with them, and she's like completely dumbfounded and, and just like confused over like this, this is the people that beat all half of the generals in the Demon King's army. What? <laughs> Nani? What? What? And of course, you have you can have the ending where the Demon King dies. Uh, and the and the, and the daughter and Serena, they kind of have to are forced to live with Kazuma, and then, and you can even segue into like a a sequel that 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 focuses on the daughter and Serena, basically just trying to find a life 
in like like they're seen as like all these dictators and you can do a whole thing on prejudice and stuff like that where like oh the daughter of they're like they're so powerful we you know and like them trying to like stay everyone trying to stay away and they're just trying to find normal jobs in life like and I and then just like with the girls you could have Serena and and the dog and what is what is her name I just realized what is her name Uh, uh yes what is crud where I am just, uh, I'm just, yeah, they, Akura, Akuria, uh, you can just have them be like, they're just supporting each other, again, you can do like the whole friendship thing, it's like, they, they're like antagonistic towards each other, and then they realize that they're just, they're, that they've been together so long, they kind of begrudgingly start to like each other as friends, and if you want to do like the lesbian angle, I go ahead, I don't really care about that either, I, I, I would be more preferable of just having them be best friends sort of thing. Of uh, them just working together, realizing that they're that they're two peas in a pod, and yeah, you can do a lot of things. I just don't think. I just don't. I think the 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 harem angle just completely curtails the story's potential like so much. I don't have anything more to say because I. It stings so much that I just. Uh, I wanted this story to be good, but it's bar. It's just boring. So uh, that is the story. I hope the next story is at least. Oh wait, it's it's called the Drama Cruise. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Um, <laughs> this is Dark Symphony Seven Seven Seven. And cut.